Hello guys and very welcome to this video and to my channel. Today I will talk about my solar trackers that I made since nine years ago I think it is. Yes, nine years and they have working pretty much just fine but now I had to change the solar tracker device on it so I have a completely new system that will follow and track the sun. My first plan here was to do something in home assistant that will take care of that because you always have those partly clothed day when the trackers go a little crazy. But this newer device here is actually much better than my old one. So now I have decided to go with this for a while and uh, I have just started this uh, home assistant project up here. So I'm still learning there, but later I probably will go with a system that is based on home assistant so I track the sun uh, with pretty much the time there and not actually following the sun. That's the plan anyway. But now I am going to talk about and show you the tracker device itself. So first of all I have uh, the eye that will track the sun is on the upper right corner on this front panel or front tracker. And the, the front tracker is the master tracker here, and the rear one is the, the, the slave. So I just have one control unit that activates both the trackers. And uh, that's really important uh, that both the trackers here are tracking at the same speed. Uh, the rear one here is a little slower. I think that's uh, due to some voltage drop in the cables between the front trackers and the rear trackers. I'm not sure, but uh, it can also be difference in the stepper motor steer. But however, that's not a big deal. Over one day, it's only maybe three or four degrees and I cannot see any difference in the power output. I have done some tests to that. So later here I of course will show you when the system is tracking the sun and show you the power output during one perfect day. And then I also have the system parked as it is right now. So we can compare the numbers from a perfect tracking day to a perfect static day. I think that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> However, let's go behind the front panels here and take a look at the ECU itself. So here is the control unit. I'm sorry it's a little windy so maybe the noise is a little disturbed here but we have to live with that. As you can see we don't have any brand name on it. Uh, I don't know about this signs here but it's probably the same as it is on English here. So a single axis sun tracker controller and light control. <laughs> I don't know really what they mean with that. And uh, DC in 10 to 28 volt and the highest current is 15 amps. So that's great if you have a 24 volt system then this should be good to go for that. So now it's parked and the way I do that is just by pressing one short time on the set button here then it will stop tracking the sun. And that's great because I don't want to track the sun today because I want to compare this day with the yesterday's production when uh, I did track the sun. So that's why it should be standing still. Maybe I said that earlier, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, and if you now want to start to track the sun again, just press quit and it will turn sunny in 10 seconds. So just let's wait there. And then I just pressed set again to stop it. And it did travel west there for a few seconds. So I will put it back. Uh, oh, sorry, it traveled east. So I will go to west, of course. Like so. So now it's in the same position as it was before. And now it just will be standing here again. Because you see that it will not turn sunny anymore. So now let's take a look at the numbers up here. You have the east 2.49 and the west 2.21 and uh, that is probably the voltage 
from the solar sensor. So we have one sensor that facing to the east and one sensor that will face to the west. So this is how this control unit take the numbers. So it will always try to achieve the same voltage or same numbers on the west and the east sensor here. And I think that those numbers here is actually the voltage that this sensor will put out. So uh, let's go into the menu and uh, see what we can find there. And you are doing that by long pressing the set button and the first step that we are see here is the interval time and what that means is that it will now wait for 300 seconds before it will do any adjusting to the sun. You can of course set this to your preferred value but this works very well for me. So let's move on in the menu here and the next is wind to the west and the other one is wind to the east and you can hook up a anometer or I don't know the name for it a, a wind sensor to this uh, tracker device and if the wind is reaching over a preset value then it will travel to the east or travel to the west and it will do that for those amount of seconds that you have already uh, set to it uh, so that's a good feature to have if you uh, have a wind meter on it. I don't have that. I don't think that it's necessary. Uh, not for me anyway. Let's move on in the menu and you will have lock wait time. So if the wind speed sensor has triggered this system, it will be locked for 905 seconds before it starts to track the sun again, but I don't have any sensor hooked up to it. So that's why I don't uh, have done any settings to this number here. And the next is sun low delay. And uh, that is set to 2800 seconds. And what that means is that if the sun is covered by a cloud, it will just stand and waiting there. And hopefully the cloud disappears and then it will of course start to track the sun again. Uh, my earlier system didn't have this uh, feature, so uh, it just kept on tracking the part of the sky that was uh, brightest at that moment. And that was not always where the sun was, so it was uh, tracking all over the place sometimes. And the worst thing that can happen is that it will travel, let's say, completely to the east. And then later on in the evening, if the sky clears up, the sun will just hit the backside of the sensor and it will still standing there facing the east. It's <laughs> very frustrating sometimes. But however, let's go on and look at the other options here. And the sun low to the west, well this can be a little confusing because I thought that, uh, okay, it's down low to the west, that's correct. And I set it to 50 seconds and that was not correct. What it means is that sun low to west it is that it will travel back to west when the sun has gone down but that's not the case here because uh, i want it to turn east when the sun has gone down so i have to move one more step in the menu and then we have sun low to west and i have set that to 55 seconds so when the tracker is to the most west position it will take around 55 seconds for it to travel to this neutral position. So that's what you have to set here. Now let's move on and you have the precision. And uh, I mentioned there in the beginning that you have the sun sensor and this is the sensor settings. So it will not start to track the sun if the voltage here is below 0.05 volts. And then we have this wind speed limit and this is pretty much the voltage from the wind sensor. But I don't have one of that so I don't do any settings to this at all. 
and sunshine limit this is when it should stop to search for the sun and the maximum voltage that i have seen is uh, almost up to 2.5 volts and this is only 0.6 volts as you can see and this is probably one of the most important settings because you want it to track the sun but you don't want to track the clouds when the sun is um, in the clouds so don't uh, there is a fine border between follow the sun or follow the the bright clouds when the sun is covered by another cloud so however this is not perfect in any way but it works much better than the old system that i had and this was also the last settings to it so there we have it now you have seen all the settings that i have done to this unit and if you now have plans to build a system like i have done here I highly recommend you to buy this unit so you can do the settings by yourself and don't just stand there with a fixed system that will search the sky for the brightest part on the sky there if the sun is uh, in a cloud at the moment so it's great to have these uh, holding times and stuff set up to it however I will leave a link down in the description for you guys so you can find it on eBay but you probably will find it on Aliexpress and uh, Amazon or other sites and now I just have to wait until this day is over and after that I hopefully have a perfect static day that I can compare with a perfect tracking day like yesterday and see how many more kilowatt hours this produce in tracking mode all right that's the plan anyway thank you so much for watching this video guys and don't forget to subscribe down below there if you want to see more of me when i am comparing those trackers in static mode versus tracking mode take care and goodbye